Hello everyone, I'm Sam. Today, let's learn the basic principles of XPIC. In microwave communication, dual polarized transmission involves two configuration methods, ACAP and CCDP. When using the ACAP method, two adjacent channels transmit two signals over a vertically polarized wave and a horizontally polarized wave, respectively. Each channel can transmit only one signal, so the transmission capacity is limited. When using the CCDP method, one channel uses the same frequency to transmit two signals over a vertically polarized wave and a horizontally polarized wave. Ideally, the two signals are perfectly orthogonal and there is no interference between them, so the receiver can easily recover the original signals. However, in reality, there is always cross-polarization interference due to antenna cross-polarization discrimination, XPD, and channel deterioration. In this case, the XPIC technology is necessary for recovering the original signals. The XPIC technology can be used with the CCDP method in order to eliminate interference between two polarized waves. The principles of XPIC are as follows. The transmitter transmits two channels of co-frequency signals over a vertically polarized wave and a horizontally polarized wave. Cross-polarization interference occurs between the two signals at the receiver end due to channel deterioration and antenna XPD. The receiver converts the received RF signals into IF signals and splits them into two channels. One channel of signals is sent to the modem unit on the local NE. The other channel of signals is sent as XPIC reference signals to the modem unit on the adjacent NE. The modem unit performs adaptive weighted combination on the IF signals and XPIC reference signals to eliminate cross-polarization interference and to recover the original signals. Next, let's look at the typical system configurations of a pair of XPIC groups on different microwave devices. To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires two RTN310NEs. The combo ports of the two RTN310NEs are connected using an XPIC cable. The cable transmits XPIC signals as well as management and control signals. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires only one RTN320NE. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires two single-channel IF boards supporting XPIC as well as two ODUs. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires two single-channel IF boards supporting XPIC or one dual channel IF board. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires two single channel IF boards supporting XPIC or one dual channel IF board as well as two RFUs and two branching units, BUs. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or two separately mounted dual polarized antennas. For the RTN9051ENE, to configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires one dual IDU RTN9051E and two ODUs. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. For the RTN9052E-NE, 
To configure one XPIC group, each XPIC site requires one single IDU RTN 9052E and two ODUs. The XPIC configuration supports one separately mounted dual polarized antenna or one directly mounted dual polarized antenna with an OMT. That's all for today. Thank you.